Welcome along to the club, brought to you by Pitch Sports Football Fan App, giving fans the voice. Get your free download on the App Store and the Google Play Store. Tonight, the club is being recorded from our homes. I'm inside the pantry, exercising good social distancing at LFC Day Trip as we're taking social distancing very seriously. And the bunker is out of action for the next couple of weeks. Tonight, with me in the pantry is uh, Barry. How are you getting on, Barry? Not too bad, Andy. Uh, Gabriel. Hey, Pop. All right. And James. All good. Yeah. Barry, are you exercising good social distancing at the moment? I am indeed, Andy. I think it's the thing to do, uh, the best thing to do at the moment. Uh, I've been at home the last couple of days, so uh, no work either. So, yeah, definitely practicing the social distancing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, James, have you had to self-isolate at all at the moment? Uh, if if I could self-isolate away from my kids, that'd be absolutely brilliant. But obviously, but hope, but not 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 yet. No, unfortunately, not. <laughs> yeah, it's tough going with the kiddies. They don't know what to do. They're not they will sink out of school. Can't have play dates, so mm. they don't know what to be doing. Um, or just being walking around fields and mountains with yep, mine. So, here. um. <laughs> <laughs> Gar, uh, have you had to self isolate? Yeah, I've been staying at home. It's a very irresponsible of us all. Yes, we went to the town for a walk around, Andy. So the uh, the old fogies were looking at the kids a bit, uh, a bit awkwardly yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to take a bit of time. the kids, huh? Yeah. Um, look, we're we're going to try and talk about Liverpool tonight. I don't know what we're going to talk about because there isn't an awful lot to talk about. Um, like we're in Ireland, the pubs are closed. It's St. Patrick's Day tomorrow, and uh, it just it all just feels so surreal. But um, have you any plans for Patrick's Day tomorrow, Gar? Uh, Bend the lock, Andy. You're going for a walk. Good stuff. Good stuff. I think we need all. I think we need all this. I need a bit of a shake up, Bar- Barry. What do you think? Yeah, it gives us a chance to catch up on things that you've been putting on the long finger for I don't know how long. Even today, yeah. there I was getting through lots of stuff with. with you know, my, my label music stuff, just stuff that I haven't got to do in a long time, and it kind of gets you a bit more focused because you've you've nothing better to be doing. You're sitting at home, so it kind of gives you a chance to do that. I think, anyway. Yeah, yeah, James. Uh, <laughs> just trying to get used to be, being a, a teacher, and um, I start a new job next week as well. So, <laughs> right. okay, it's a bit hectic. yeah, homeschooling, it's mad. Um, Anyway, uh, we're gonna we'll talk about the football. There's been a lot of talk about different outcomes. Um, I I actually think it all should be suspended for now. That there's a lot more serious things going on than the outcome of the league and the different permutations of what can or can't happen. Um, I think this time next week, the UK will have probably stopped talking about it because there's a lot more serious issues at hand. But while it's still current. Um, I mean, what, what do you think yourselves, guys? What's your feeling on what will happen? Not not your ideas about what should happen, but what's your feeling on what will on what will happen, Barry? Um, well, for me at the moment, I I, I think I'd say obviously the Euros will be cancelled, uh, well postponed anyway to next year to, to to give some sort of room anyway for the, for the league season to be finished. I think that's what it's going towards at the moment, and I hope that's that's the way it's going, but. We obviously don't know, you know, when the peak of this is and when we can actually, or when the teams can get back playing football, be that, you know, behind closed doors or, or back with fans there as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also the other leagues as well, I think, I don't know whether that's going to dictate the decision because, you know, obviously it's a lot worse in Italy and Germany and Spain. And if they decide to, you know, cancel the season uh, or cancel their seasons, that could, you know, impact on the Premier League and they might decide, right, we have to do that as well. I hope not, but that's... That's that. That's obviously something that could happen as well. 
Yeah, Gar, I mean, what other leagues do, what other major leagues do is going to have a big impact on all of this because I think they probably need to align together uh, in terms of continuing on with football, especially in Europe. Uh, so everybody's probably going to have to do the same thing. What, what do you think yourself, Gar? There's so much different carry-on going at the moment, Andy. So many different outlets from, obviously, the, the people who run all the major leagues are, are, are all saying different things. So there's there's no there's no one coordinating to be the same way at all. Isn't it? You've had a, an owner come out with a mad theory today as well uh, in France. Um, so so no, one's, no one's correlating at the moment, Andy. And uh, unfortunately, we're, we're all in the unknown premiership yeah. owners. That was the Leon chief executive. Tell me, tell me about that one. Aulis has wants the best team over the last five years to win win the league or some some crap like that. So uh, it, listen, that ain't, it ain't gonna happen. But you know, it, he's almost borderline conspiracy theorist there now. Yeah. At, at the moment, it, it, it's just mad stuff. But no one knows what's going on. We're in a huge amount of uncertainty. And um, football, unfortunately, has to take you know a second place in the moment till everyone health wise and we can be all you know. A bit safer, I suppose, to, to to go out in the open. But it just there's just too many mad theories going around at the moment. I think everyone has to stay to, take stock. I think the Euros being pushed back uh, is, is going to be a huge one for people to continue if 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 it does go that way. Um, but at the moment, there's, there's just too much, too many mad things going around in, in my opinion at the moment. But, but as I said, the Euros being pushed back does open a lot, uh, open the gates if 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 people want to obviously extend their leagues. Yeah, James, what do you think yourself? Um, I mean, there's yeah, no that's, point that's, in talking about... That's the lads have been saying. There, there's so many permutations, and I think, you know, we're all waiting on what UEFA come out with tomorrow, and that will kind of make it easier to determine what's going to happen. As, and then if, you know, if we have the space to be able to run the league throughout the summer. But as, as everyone said, like football is kind of secondary to what's going on yeah. <laughs> at the moment. So it's, yeah, think, it's uh, hard to... It's hard to kind of get too too emotional about it because there's way bigger things going on in the world at the moment. So it's a bit mad, to be honest. But yeah, I think, um, look, they were talking about postponing the Olympics today. So I, I have a feeling that the uh, Euros are going to be pushed out till next year. Yeah, look, I, th- I think, as you say, uh, there is more serious matters at hand. And I, I think none of these decisions can get made now anyway because we don't know what's ahead of us. Um, exactly. And when you see, even at this point, there's still an awful lot of people in the world, mainly in the UK and America, who aren't taking this seriously and their whatever other agendas are going on. But we all need to come to the realisation globally that this is a massive threat to so many millions of people. And uh, the football Olympics, you know, any other sport and event. I mean, there's the Masters on board that's cancelled, but all of these things need to be um, put in the back there. Yeah, I know the Grand Nationals cancelled now. Cheltenham should have been cancelled last week. There was concerts on over the weekend in England, should have been cancelled. And then up to the other night, Saturday night in Dublin, there were still people in crowded pubs. So hopefully the penny drops this week and we can kind of forget about sport and maybe just focus on keeping us keeping everyone well. Um, <clears throat> But uh, on the football, you know, with all these changes, uh, it does affect player contracts. And one player uh, who who's very important uh, to Liverpool, in my opinion, his contract is going to hit the limelight again. If you're if you've been reading any football news, is uh, Ginny Van Aldum. Uh, how big of a loss would it be, Barry, if we lost Van Aldum in a similar kind of circumstance to Emery Chan, or even if he had to go just the year before his contract? Yeah, he'd be, he'd be a massive loss. Like, you know, when it comes to our our midfield three, he's 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 one of the three there, isn't he? You know, so alongside Fabinho and Henderson, in my opinion. So, you know, I don't think he's gonna. I don't think he will go. Well, I don't think Klopp is gonna want him to go. So if he goes, it'll be it'll be Ronaldo wanting to go himself. But yeah, he's been. You know, he's kind of a unsung hero at times. Ronaldo was with his performances. So. Um, I'd be totally disappointed to see him leave if he was if he was going to leave, um, but I can't really see it happen unless, as I said, he he wants to leave himself. Yeah, absolutely, Gar. Uh, up to it all going a bit pitong against Atletico. Ginny Ronaldo was excellent. Um, it was one of those things where uh, 
this build up on Twitter happens where certain players start getting the, the bit of stick and people forget big games like Barcelona last year when he was excellent and uh, it's just like as Barry says he's an unsung hero and he does work that people don't tend to notice I mean anyone that goes to games will look at him uh, off the ball and he's just an incredible part to a midfield and so important to everything we do uh, what, do, what, what do you think are well, we've seen ourselves, lads, with, with many great teams over the years, and, and obviously we ho- hopefully we win this league and we come on to be come on a great team and, and be dominant. But there's always an important cog in every great team. If you look at obviously the Barca greats, it's Javi and Iniesta. These boys didn't score 15 goals a game or, or 10 goals a game. They were important parts of of a, a manager's formation. And if you look where Klopp plays and and the way obviously Genie just fits into that, he's so good on the ball. He rarely loses possession of a ball. He'll he'll always play ten yard, five yard passes. You're not going to see him playing a fifty yard pass very rarely, I suppose. It'd be such an important part of that to that midfield tree. And um, he works so well with Henderson, as yeah. as we've all seen. And I suppose above all that, he's very very reliable. Um, he's he's very rarely injured. Um, yeah, it's probably down to his mentality. I'm sure he's one of these guys who may feel knock and want to play because he just comes across as that type of guy who who if the manager turned around and said, oh, "I want to rest you," he'd have an issue. We saw last year in the in the Barca game that he had an issue being a sub and he come on obviously got, got two goals. So he's that type of guy. You know, he's, he's a really important part. And Klopp has all, often spoke about how important he is in the dressing room as well. So mm-hmm. to me, he's a huge, huge important part of that side. Of of that first eleven, and and I suppose main thing, he's, he's a huge part of the squad. Yeah, James. Um, with, with any great team, it it needs freshening up. I think, especially with Klopp's approach. I've talked about this before. I think Klopp is an amazing motivator, but he gets he gets players to do things that they probably could don't believe they could do themselves. Like I think he maximizes a player's potential but I'm not sure how sustainable that is and how how long you can convince a player to work so hard and dedicate himself so much there are certain players that are probably comes natural to them like James Milner he spends he spend his whole career but as a t- as a team a great team develops and you've seen it with United over the over the years players went and players came there was always a bit of a freshening up and Klopp is going to be around now for another four seasons. We're probably going to see the team regenerated and players coming in and out. And we're not, we're not, would he, would he be saying to you as one of the weaker players in the team that we could pro- probably could change? When I say the weaker players in the team, I'm not talking about the squad, but of the first 11, would you say he's one of the weaker players, James? Not in my opinion, no. He he's vital to the way we play in our midfield. Uh, he's and you know, he if you if you've seen him in like you, you know the the big Champions League games, he always delivers. Now you know he does go miss in the odd game, but oh, God no, I I I'd really hate to see him go. To be honest, um, I think he's vitally important to our midfield and just the way he shields the ball in midfield. We have no one in the who really does that, and then he you know he does have a pretty good burst of acceleration from midfield to link up with the forwards and he has been coming up with the goals as well um very, some very important goals well you know we thought it was a really important one against a, a let ago and then it went completely yeah. pear-shaped so uh no i would i i think he'd be really hard to pl- replace because klopp has molded him into the player he is now yeah so it if it's pure so it would be i think it's it'd be very difficult um to kind of replace him because you know Klopp's essentially going to have to start over with someone else and, and mould him because you know he didn't come in as a, a central midfielder he came in as kind of a more attacking midfielder and Klopp has pushed him into that midfield and you know we've we've seen the things he's he's doing for us so I'd, I'd be very hesitant to let him go and I think Klopp will be as well so the only one I think it would really be up to uh, Wijnaldum if, if he wants to make a move and play for a, a less intense team but you know why would you want to leave this team at the moment there yeah if if you know if the world gets back to normality you know we should be able to go again next season and 
push as hard as we have this season. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'd be... Yeah, you'd question a player's motives for wanting to leave us at the moment, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, Barry, it is true. Like, it kind of is, it might be dictated by the player themselves, whether they actually vocally uh, decide they want to leave and or communicate that to Klopp, or else Klopp sees a significant drop off in someone's effort that, yeah, look at this player. Like, I think he's he fancies a handier number now. Um, but out of the 11 we see there now, who, who would you see you know, over the next two or three years going and being replaced? Out of, out of the first 11 at the moment? Out of the first 11 at the moment. I mean, it's it's we, we get on to players that are, it's pretty much accepted they, they're, they're going to leave when the season finally does end. Um, yeah. But out of the first 11, who could you see going? Um, for uh, f- the first name that comes is, is Salah. To be honest, I think who, who could be replaced, um, yeah. or he he'd want to leave maybe you know over the next couple of seasons. But I can't look. I can't see Henderson from the midfield. I can't see Henderson going. I can't really see Fabinho going either because he's you know he's not there. He's not at the club that long. Um, even though I I wouldn't like to see when Aldum go. You know he he could go obviously if if he, if if he's looking or making you know signs to leave the club. Um, he's well, he's twenty nine now I think so. You know he he might want to finish up his career you know elsewhere. He might want to finish his career up you know in Holland. Um, but as it stands with the first eleven, you know there's not a lot of names that that stand out for me. You know except maybe Salah because he might want to move on elsewhere because. You know, I think this team are, you know, only reaching its peak or maybe not even reaching its peak. I think they still yeah. have a couple of seasons where, you know, we could still win a lot of trophies or go on and win. As the lad said earlier, you know, we, we could go on <laughs> and be pretty dominant now for the next couple of years. So there's, there's not really any names that you would say, oh, yeah, they'll they'll definitely leave. But, um, you know, I think the only one that really said, for me, I just feel like Salah will, will probably move on in the next season or two anyway. Gar, same question to you. Um What's your thoughts on it? I mean, as a player, as a player goes through their their career with Liverpool or any club, you know, they're on a kind of a curve where they get into the team and then they peak and then they drop off. I don't think there's anyone really on that downward curve. I think the whole eleven are, are peaking. Um I know we see a lot of chopping and changing at the back, whether it's um Gomez, Matip or Lover at times. But you know, if the strong if you're considering going as the strongest, uh, I think they're all pretty much playing the best football of their lives. What would you think there? I think with Gomez, the only slight issue w- would have been the past is fitness. But in fairness, he, he, he's flying again since he's come back. A couple of little niggles. Yeah. I think the midfield there, you've just brought about Genie. Is, is there another midfielder on the way? That, that they know of and, and, and you know his time is going to be limited a bit or does he think his time may be, may be limited a bit uh, I suppose that is the question and, and as, as the lads have just said the Barry just said I think Salah could be the one but don't forget Mane has, gets a lot of links with Madrid I just think he'll it'll be either one of them to go yeah and what about Bobby? no I just think he, he, he's he's part he's part of the team I think he's He's, he's he's Klopp's boy. I think he's Klopp's go-to boy. Uh, even even in down times when he's not scoring, you can see he's he's one of the first names on the team. She, until he brings in a forward who can play like him, he, he's yeah. he's not the one who goes. Yeah, James. I don't know. I noticed a few people who are normally saying um, putting together some arguments to say that Firmino hasn't been as good or as important as he as he previously has been. Um, for Liverpool, I mean, he did score a league all at Anfield all season and various sort of things that he would, would normally do. And maybe people are sort of saying that his impact when he's not scoring isn't as great as it was. What, what's your thoughts on that, James? Uh, I disagree. I, 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 Bobby is so essential to what we do. You, you see how you know how disjointed we look when he doesn't play. Um, he, he's that kind of link we have between the midfield. Even like if you look at him against Atletico, I think it was one of his best games this season, and he was all over the place. He was dropping back and you know getting the ball. And I just, I just think um, 
he's a very unique player and as Klopp has said numerous times it's it's not just about his goal scoring he offers just so much as a team player and that's you know he and I think he sacrificed some some of that you know uh, goal threat by being such a team player but he's an essential cog in, in the in the way we play yeah yeah I think so too but when you see when you see links with the likes of team awareness uh, you wonder would that mean him playing centrally through the um up forward and Bobby dropping dropping in behind or you know we're looking at a team maybe a shake up in formation or a shake up in our approach to games I think Klopp every season has kind of changed things I mean you're yeah, looking at one season where we are we kind of we're leaking too many goals I know then we brought in Allison. then we are very tight we seem to defend that bit deeper um, and we didn't allow teams to play between the lines I think the focus was on um, on, on not leaking goals and then this season we did play a higher line there was various theories behind that maybe with the AR then we wouldn't have any uh, dodgy offside decisions going against us and we were even very high on set pieces so signing players like Team Awareness might facilitate or force or for whatever you want to call it, a shape change. Barry, could you see Klopp changing his approach to games, his shape again? Um, I don't think so, to be honest. Like, I just was going to uh, say there as well, Minamino as well. Like, whereas, you know, he, he was brought in to be kind of maybe a player to rotate with Bobby as well. And obviously he hasn't really stepped up or, you know, he doesn't feel like he's ready to, to put him in there. So I can't see Klopp really changing formation too much I think he'll stick to what he knows what he's what, what he, you know what he's achieved or what, how he's achieved the success with Liverpool with those formations if he brings Werner in I think it'll just be for you know pure competition for the for the front three you yeah. know because get them you know just keep them on their toes and you know when you have someone like Timo Werner who's one of the top strikers in European football it's going to it's going to push them if they feel that they're you know they don't have to work for their place every week and of course Minamino hopefully you know he can step up now next season. I think that'll be his time to shine. So you'll have both him and Werner if we sign him to push the, the three lads up front um, as competition. I don't think that will necessarily mean that we'll be changing any sort of formation or, or the way we set up. Um, mm. But yeah, I, I think it's if he comes in, it'll be just pu- you know purely for a competition rather than to, to any sort of change of shape. The players look to the captain. The captain looks to the manager. And the manager looks to you. It's time to be heard. Pitch is the new app that gives football fans the voice you deserve. Get your views sent straight to media pundits, commentators and the club you love. From dodgy penalties to rating match performance, make your opinion count. The manager's looking to sub him off and the fans agree. Download the Pitch app for free today. Be heard. Gar, um, apart from uh, the obvious, not when I say the obvious, the, the strong links, anyone take your fancy around Europe that would suit Liverpool? I know you watch all the leagues. I think at the moment, Danny, the, the strongest one seems to be obviously Havertz. Yeah. Either, go, either goes to Ultra Munich and then and Timo Werner seems to be the other one. Is, is there a young left full that you take at the moment? Um, to, to just for you know, I suppose a bit of backup for Robbo. It, is there anywhere else, Andy, that that you see being? being I don't think so. I, I suppose the centre half. If if we do say a lot of them, I think if you you want to go on to that later on anyway, I think that's that could be a, a crucial issue. Does does he go for a young lad and, and you know try and bet him in a bit? Because because if you look around Europe at the moment, if if you're going to sign someone major, it means that Gomez steps out a bit. Because there's no one going to come, and, you know, with, with, with the mentality that they're walking straight into outside. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's uh, no one like this. It would be, it would be technically be someone young, so, someone who's who's prepared to sit and wait on the bench or, or come in in, in, a, in a squad rotation. There, there's no one at the moment who I don't think with, with the way Gomez is playing, he's playing really really well. That that goes straight in there. But I think by the obvious, Andy Havertz. If he does go to Bayern Liverpool, we do need a mid- midfielder. Obviously, someone we can trust a bit and someone who gives us something different. I suppose that that thing that we're still waiting for Kaya to do, unfortunately, and um, he keeps breaking down. Uh, but I think Werner is, is, is probably done and dusted at this stage. So I, I think past the obvious ones, Andy, I don't see. I don't see anyone else. 
James, could you see Sancho coming to Liverpool? Ooh, uh, well, we've been linked with him a couple of times. Um, it's hard to know. Um, he kind of fits the mould of the player type of player we go for, and he's definitely in the right age bracket. So we've got Nike coming on board. I presume they'll want some sort of big name signing, which they're probably willing to assist with. So yeah. I could see him. I could definitely see him coming in. So, but it's, it's oh, yeah, yeah. He he fits. He fits the. He fits the FSU model. So yeah, yeah. definitely. So so say Nike are making um, a big. They want to make a big statement and sign a, a player to be their kind of a uh, flagship all over the posters for mm. Liverpool promoting the brand. Barry, if it's between Mbappe and Sancho, who are you taking? Mm. Uh, transfer fee aside I'd definitely go for Mbappe to be honest with you but <laughs> I, think, I think both of them to be honest with you like I think as James says he's, Sancho fits the, the the model for FSG but even his price tag he's going to cost what 120 million at least like yeah uh, they're both they're both going to be massive money both going to be kind of record breaking totally I, I don't think I don't think FSG are into doing that or either Klopp he doesn't really like to be you know, spending that type of money on players, he'd rather spend you know less less money on a player and build them up to be a superstar as what he's done before. But yeah, if I if, if it was going if it was going to be one of them two, I'd I'd have had to go for Mbappe to be honest with you. Yeah, Gar. The only reason you see one of, one of them come in, lads, is if if Mane or Salah goes. That's the only yeah. reason you see one of them come in as as yeah. as a direct replacement. Obviously, transfer fee fits. Um, but that, that's the only reason I'd say uh, even that potentially happened yeah yeah no I, I kind, of, kind of agree I think signing a player like Mbappe kind of makes a mockery of what we've been doing for an awful long time we've got to this point by you know players being together in, the, in this whole project and I think Mbappe would represent the kind of someone being you know airlifted in. He'd be on twice the wage as anyone else would be on, and it could be a very disruptive factor. And um, we, I reckon, uh, the Sancho thing could be magic. I think Werner could come in and do extremely well too. But as you say, Gar, these are type of players that if they came in, they'd have to be playing ninety percent of games. I often used to use the argument: there's enough minutes to be played between the Champions League and the Cups and different things to give everyone minutes. But with the with those three players up top, Mane, Salah and Firmino, they all have to feel like they're number one for that for them, you know, three positions up top. I think if somebody as soon as somebody else comes in and of that sort of stature, they're gonna have to play and someone's gonna have to make way. <clears throat> so um I think that God statue that Andy tried to put across, it almost gets built upon them too in regards of when they're winning their African, African football every year and they have this little battle every year. You know, that, that, you know, that it seems to be this thing with African players that this little God factor comes in and yeah. obviously the, the agent starts sniffing around a bit and then the links with Barca and Real come and et cetera, et cetera. And I think you're right, as you've just said, you know, that, that, that God factor, that idol factor, is is definitely with the two of those at the moment. Bobby, you know, he he knows he's part of a fulcrum, but with them, with them two going head to head with each other every year, I think that's that that'll be the major one for me. Right, um, I think it's accepted now. We probably uh, a lot of people be put out of our misery this year with Lovren gone. Uh, <laughs> I think. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I've, I've been I've been someone who who's defended him over the years not because he's a great player but just because some of the criticism has been unfair but um, I think I think I'd be just happy to see a centre back going that's so injury prone that we can bring in a big opportunity to bring in someone someone good who can stay fit and provide them competition for places just what we're seeing now Gomez you're looking at 50% of the season every season same with Matip same with Lovren they can't really seem to string many games together. So it'd be good to just see an opportunity for um for someone else to come in and, and um kind of 
challenge Gomez for that spot beside uh, Van Dijk because he's got that nail down. I don't think anyone can disagree with me there. Uh, James, is there anyone you'd fancy to come in, or not even an individual, but would you would you see it as a chance for a youngster young to come in, or some more established? I think it's a youngster. I think Gomez is who Klopp envisages being Van Dijk's partner. Yeah. So um, I, I, I don't see a big name uh, signing coming in as, as a replacement centre back because, you know, Lovren is at this stage a fringe player. So it's to, it would just be to replace him in the squad. So maybe Klopp would just look at someone who we've already got, one of the young lads, yeah. um, promote up to the squad. Like, um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't see it being a, a one that we put serious money behind because I know you're saying that you know Gomez only plays 50% of the season but I think Klopp is trying to obviously resolve that and he sees him as you know the the natural partner for Van Dijk so yeah. I, I don't I don't see a big name signing coming in for that I think I think will be your promotion from the under 23s personally yeah. up, to, yeah. up to the squad so someone like uh, what's uh, Hoover or someone like that maybe yeah uh, another player who's probably coming towards the end of his Liverpool career is, of course, James Milner. I want him to stay around forever. I think if we could clone him, or if Klopp could clone any player that's there at the moment, it would be James Milner. Uh, I think he's going to be a huge loss. I, I hope it's one of these cases where he's given the job at the club and, and he has that influence around. It just seems like it just seems like he's he's nearly part. He's nearly in between the players and the management. He's it was a little bit of a chat on the pitch. Was it for the... Um, the Bournemouth game. Bournemouth game, yeah. yeah. Just seems like he has a has a huge respect in that dressing room. I think it's going to be a big loss. Um, Barry, what, what do you think? Yeah, definitely will. Is he, he has a year left, is it? On, he's another year after this year, is it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so yeah, he definitely will be a big loss. But, you know, you've seen, you've seen in that Bournemouth game... Um, you know, he, he was the difference in us getting those three points. Obviously, with with the goal line clearance and everything, we just was all yeah. around performance that day. Um, you know, and he that was his. I think that was his first game back, like play, playing the full ninety minutes. But just he, he, he you could see how how up for the up for the game he was. You know, and, and he was just showing what we'd missed in the in the previous few games. You know what I mean? He was being a leader on the pitch. He was giving it giving it to the referee and he was just he was just being a leader all around and it was something that we'd missed in the, in the, in those previous games. So yeah, not not having him around it will be a massive loss to us. So, you know, we have a few leaders there in the team, but I think that performance in particular against Bournemouth when he came back just shows you how how important he is to the team. Yeah, um Garrett, don't sign up to the whole uh, honest British player thing uh, in any way at all. But his honesty is uh, incredible. You know, he did have that goal line clearance and then when he was asked about it, when the the guy uh, interviewing him after the match in the post match press uh, post match interview was kind of praising him on it, he uh, held his hand up and says, Well I, I think it was my fault he was playing on side. So that's the mentality of someone like James Miller, isn't it? You know anyone else would be Take a couple of knocks as well on the in his career. I think Sunez had a few golden goals when he when he was a young player as well. He's he's had a couple of clubs in fairness to him. He, Newcastle Villa. He's obviously won, won bits of City, then come to us. But he's, it's just his professors, and Mandy. I'm, I'm, you, you go to a lot of games of you see him over there. He's he's when you go to a game, you can just see his focus. You know, kids would be screaming at him, and he, he he's no time. He just you know yeah. he's focused. At a game and was lucky enough to meet meet Noir a few years ago. My young lads and you could just see how focused Noir was pre match. It was for the Ireland game years ago. And yeah. players, uh, no, that's that's what gives these players that mental state of mind. Is they're so focused on on the task ahead that their professionalism shines through at the end. And you know it's, it, it shows when when they become experienced and become model pros, if you want to call it that as well. He's, he's, he's a huge, huge part of that squad. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, it's a, it's pretty much undisputable at this stage that he's our best ever free transfer, um, James. Oh, without a doubt. Um, as everyone has said there, you know, if he does go, he would be a huge loss. And and to be honest, the only club I could see him going back to would be to Leeds. So, um, 
if they get promoted next season, I, I'd, I'd be wor- or this season, I'd be worried because I, I, I could see him going back for to have one, uh, one season or a couple of seasons with Leeds. Um, I, I agree with what you were saying, Andy. I, I definitely think you know we should try and make some sort of. Uh, make him part of the coaching staff because he's just brilliant. That that speech before the Bournemouth game was just fantastic. It's just like it shows, you know, the the type of guy he is. And, and you just look at his fitness level. Like he probably could sign up for another year because he's just so fit. If you see those preseason training videos, he's always the, that lactation test. He's always the one who wins it. He's won it like for the past two or three seasons. Like beats all the younger players he is just so fit and such a professional he it's a massive loss if he goes and i i, I really hope he stays to be honest yeah lactation test i thought that was a uh, breastfeed <laughs> is, uh, is it not the- <laughs> <laughs> uh, so- I don't know, uh, whatever it's called. Eddie, what, did, what did you win that show for? Uh, Nicky Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop. Come here. Uh, just, say the, just say the football was to end uh, tomorrow for for years, right? <laughs> say, like, you know, extreme circumstances. Uh, there are, the players have to find new jobs. I have a, I have a list of, of kind of jobs, not so much jobs, but activities and uh, I want just to kind of tell me which player would be best suited to each. So um, I'm going to start off with you, Barry. Uh, who out of Liverpool squad would make the best Love Island contestant and why? Oh, it'll have to be Dejan Lovren, I'd say, would it? Yeah. Dejan Lovren, just, yeah, you know, he absolutely loves himself, doesn't he? So <laughs> I just think it's a, it's a look of him as well, you know what I mean? He'd, he'd love to be... On Love Island, uh, causing mayhem, I would say. Anyway, so, yeah, I think it's definitely Deja and Lovren for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it'd be a bit of crack as well, like, you know, making a few mistakes here and there and blowing his, uh, blowing his opportunities with different girls in the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Gar, what about uh, the snidiest clamper? Definitely Robbo. Definitely, hands down, is Robo. Ah, you bastard, Gar. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely Robo. Robo, make this noise, his clamper. Tell me why. <laughs> it's just the way he goes around the pitch with his little digs and the little kicks and the little smiles, the little slaps on the head. It's it, it's definitely Robo all day long. There's no argument about that. Yeah, James, I mean, you're, it sounds like you were going to pick Robo for that. As I well, definitely so, was going to um, pick Robo. It's what, just... what would your reasons for that be? Oh, just, just he is the snidest fucker in the world, isn't he? You just see him when he faced up to Messi against Barcelona last year and he had no respect for him whatsoever. It's just, you know, it's totally Robbo. Robbo would just clamp your car and stand there and practically be laughing at you and just he wouldn't give a fuck. So, yeah, it's Robbo all the way. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I think the, the next one's probably obvious. No, that's actually, it's not. I'd say there's a couple of contenders. Who would you say um, would be the best stripper? Hello? Who's that? Hello? Who, who would be the best stripper? Uh, I'll go to you um, again, James. Uh, Ox. <laughs> Just yeah. based, based on that dance video the other night, he's, he seems to have a lot of coordination. So I think Ox. And he seems a natural show off. So I'm going to go with Ox. Right. Uh, Barry, who would make the best news reader? I'd say... Uh... <laughs> I'd say Adam Lalana. He's a he well. He's got a well pronounced Southern English accent. He he he'd go down well on, on the news reading out the news. I think. Yeah. Um, so M- Milner, Milner is definitely a man who does the scores on a Saturday afternoon, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good point. Good point. Harchester uh, United one. Do that impression Rob- again. <laughs> <laughs> no. Why <laughs> not? Okay. It was the worst Irish Yorkshire man ever. Okay. Long uh, long distance truck driver. Alison. Uh, yeah. he, look, he looks the part anyway, Alison. For truck driving. Barry? 
Yeah, truck driver, Allison, I'd say. Yeah, going for Allison. Uh, Gar? Oof. I want to give Kate a job here. Right. <laughs> okay, well, pick a, pick a job. Yeah, no, the truck driver wouldn't be a bad job for him. All he has to do is get in now the cab. There's not much it, m- to it, risk to it, his injury there, is there? I'm giving Kate, don't you? Well, well no. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know whether you whether you're debuting in our trucks at all, but you know you can't get injured coming. In. It is dangerous enough coming down out of a truck, you know, to keep uh, four points of contact. <laughs> I want to give Kate a job here, even if it's for smuggling into countries or something. Yeah, I'll give it to Kate. Well, what about what about he's a truck driver, but it's like a low loader or something, you know, where the, the, the cab's a bit easier to access. You know those you know those trucks that push planes out? Give him a job nightline. Give him a nightline van. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> do you need a sea license? I just, just wanna just yeah, I just want to minimize risk to the chap. <laughs> right. Okay, uh, James, who would make the best guard or, or for anyone who's not listening in Ireland the uh, police officer? Oh god, uh, Virgil. <laughs> Virgil, yeah, yeah. Like you, you just, you just would have respect for him straight away. Like you know, no one's going to talk back to Virgil. So you know, he just, yeah, it's perf- perfect for that line of work. Right. Okay. Well, look. Hopefully, the football does come back at some stage, and we don't have to redeploy our players because uh, out of all of them, we think only Rabble would make a decent. Other <laughs> occupation. Um, so moving on, with all the Corona, COVID nineteen stuff going on, um, what is the most annoying thing you've seen people do? You know, we've seen people taking all the toilet roll and taking all the nappies and stuff like that. But in your communities, Barry, have you seen anything that's pissed you off, or even made you laugh, or have you got any funny WhatsApps? Uh, trying to wind everyone up and create hysteria. Not really. No, I haven't seen anything in in the community really. Just the usual com- was coming on from work last week past Parnell Street and the, the Tesco's there. There was a queue right down the whole of Parnell Street to go in. And I don't know. I just wouldn't be the type of person to be panicking over something like this and going buying, you know, panic buying. And um, yeah, that's just the only thing really I can think of. Like, I just people. You know, I, I wouldn't find myself doing that. So I just think it's a bit you know, ridiculous to be panic buying so much of or something because the, the shops are staying open as it is, aren't they? Yeah. Even if, even if there is a complete lockdown. So, yeah, I just, you know, just the whole panic buying is, is just a bit hard to believe, I think. Um, Karen, what's the stupidest thing you've seen people stockpiling? Um, I mean, I remember when it snowed, everybody was buying all the bread and all the milk. Uh, now people are buying toilet rolls and they're buying uh, nappies and in Ireland there's people saying to be buying all the potatoes which which I'm not too happy about like potatoes go off like I don't really understand that um, but what, what's the most ridiculous thing you've seen people panic buying on the first major day lads I went in to uh, I was going to get some lunch but obviously the panic point had started so the queues are miles down in the local Lidl um, near my job so I did see a, la- a couple of lads entering with suitcases so I thought there was a holiday giveaway or something <laughs> <laughs> and then next minute this guy walks by me lads trolley absolutely jammed to the hilt with tinned ham look for fuck's sake lads you, Tim I, Ham, so I, I think I'd rather fucking die than eat spam. Yeah, I couldn't believe I was in pure shock. Yeah, James, uh, have you seen anyone buying any ridiculous stuff? I, I haven't seen anyone ridiculous, but I, I drove through James's hospital today and I saw the bus stop there and there was nine. 10 people who worked in the hospital all jammed into the bus shelter and I'm just thinking are you fucking kidding me like seriously like no distance they're all basically on the bench really close together and all corralled around each other and it's just like are you 
seriously, it was just, I was just gobsmacked by it, the stupidity of it. Like, one, they're smoking on a non-smoking campus, and two, there's no social distancing going on whatsoever. And given where they worked, it was just like I was just, I was just gobsmacked. Yeah. Actually, Andy, now that I think of it, there I forgot to say on Saturday there I was co- coming up Dame Street, and uh, I'm pretty sure it was a stag do. Um, with a load of lads, about twenty lads, all dressed up in like the the medical gear, all the you know the onesie gear with the face mask, walking down the road. I presume they were going on a, on a on a pub crawl stag do, and I was like, fucking hell! Like you know, I just like, couldn't believe people were dressing. They were dressing up like that as if it was some sort of joke, like. All oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been there's been a few uh, dodgy costumes going around. Like there was one doing doing rounds where somebody had bought one of those small greenhouse uh, things you can buy in Aldi or little, and they put it over their whole body and walked around. Um, yeah, this was like twenty ads. They were going out on the piss for the night. I presume if if any of them yeah. was fun, but it was just like fucking hell. Like that's a bit much. I think like you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, I suppose this is all. This panic is all going to really happen um, in the UK now soon enough. When I'm sure Boris Johnson will change his tune, and then the the stuff that we've been getting uh, threatening <laughs> things like the army coming in the street. So we'll, um, I'm sure we'll see all this stuff happening in England next week, and there'll be plenty of videos down the rounds. Um, at least Milner's family won't be short the milk because he wins the lactating test all the time. So. <laughs> Uh, right um, look at we'll we'll finish up soon enough um, but just before we do if the awards were being given out now for you know young player of the season and player of the season uh, give us your nominations Barry a uh, young player I think everyone probably agree it's it's going to be Trent I think uh, I don't think he really has much competition there this year you know he's in a team you know that's going to win the league um, he's he's been unbelievable this season again, particularly with his assists. So I don't think there's any any argument there to say that Trent won't get it. And then for for player of the year, I think we spoke about it last week on the club. Or like I think it was between Henderson or Mane. I'd, I'd go for Mane, even though I think the first half of the season was probably better for him. Um, but he's been he's just been a really important this season. You know, he's won games. We've won a lot of games, but. He, you know, one goal, and if you look back through those games, <clears throat> a lot of those one goals, the winners were scored by Mane. So he's he's a, a major reason why we're twenty five points clear. So I definitely give it to Mane. Yeah, that's fair. It's hard to argue with that. Uh, yeah, Garmin, obviously Trent has Young Player of the Year wrapped up there. Uh, is there an argument to give him the Senior Player of the Year, or would we agree with Barry? Yeah, I think Barry's got it nailed on. Yeah, I think. His his youth is on his side. I think his his, his assists, his uh, his stats are just off the wall for for the way he plays as well. In fairness, uh, you got people like Lineker eulogising about him every week as well. Um, and I think it comes down to that Mane and Henderson thing as well. I did, I did say last week, my head thinks Mane and my heart says Henderson. Uh, but I think Hendo would probably get the Reuters award, and I think Mane gets the the Premier League Player of the Year. Yeah, it's an interesting one, James. Uh, it's 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 quite um, reasonable to to expect, um, and it's quite plausible that the PFA Player of the Year might be different to the Reuters Player of the Year to the uh, the Liverpool fans. Like, assuming a Liverpool player wins it, uh, yeah. the Liverpool fans Player of the Year, um, different reasons, you know, different influence, different agendas going on, and narratives, you know, when it comes to anything like that. So. What about yourself? If it's the Liverpool fans player of the year, who's getting it for you? Hendo. Hendo. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no one else. Could, you know, you can argue for Mane, but you know, he's he's the he's the captain of our team. He's lifted three trophies. This, you know, so he's just been sensational. Um, he's just drives that team on, and we've seen when he's been missing how badly we've missed him and uh, yeah so for me it's without a question it goes to Henderson yeah um, I'm going to give it to Henderson as well um, simply because I've argued this case for such a long time <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I'd, I'd, I'd like to see him lift another trophy so if he was able to lift the player of the year trophy and do another little dance for us that would uh, make me very happy 
So Henderson for me. So yeah, be nice to see Hendo uh, going around because it looks like we're going to be the reign and European champions for another year, reign and world champions for another year, reign and super uh, cup champions for another year, and Premier League champions, of course, and then having Hendo lifting his player of the year as well. So uh, that'd work, yeah, that work out lovely for us if that all happened anyway. It'd be a nice, it'd be a nice uh, bus parade when it when it happens. God knows. But anyway, lads, we leave it there. Uh, thanks, Barry, Gar, and James. Don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how we're going to have football to talk about next week or anything to talk about next Monday. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, thanks, all the best. <laughs>